but he was involved in a shootout because some guy said he played the wrong chord. So he challenged the guy to a duel saying, Sidney Bechet never plays the wrong chord. Gustav asked this question about playing the soprano and it's a question that comes up quite a lot so I thought it'd be a good idea to do a vlog episode about it so if you just give me a second to pop it on my first tip is you need to listen to a lot of different soprano players you need to find out who you, the soprano players are that you like and there are a number of soprano players you need to listen to for example Sidney Bechet <laughs> It's an acquired taste. There's a lot of vibrato in there. Um, it goes, you know, he's going back a while. But Coltrane said when he first heard of heard some good Sidney Bechet records that, you know, wow, did these old, all these old guys really swing like that? When I had the conversation with Bramford Marsalis, who I think has is the best soprano player I think there's ever been. He certainly has a soprano tone I want to emulate. He, I asked him. I said, you know, kind of, what do you do to kind of get that soprano though? And he's like, man, Sidney Bechet. Sydney Bechet. So I, I kind of went back and listened to loads of Sydney. So that's the thing. I've set up a playlist below. I won't put it in as a card because I want you to carry on watching this, but there is a playlist below um, and also on the channel of soprano players. There's also one for alto and tenor players that I've done for students. But if you're thinking of playing soprano, that's the one to look through. See which soprano players you like. You'll notice there's no Kenny G on there because Kenny G is not up to the same standard as the rest of the guys. Tip number two is make sure you get a good soprano. Obviously it's really important to get a good saxophone, you know, get the best tool you can get to do the job. But with soprano I have found that because of the engineering involved in getting a good sound out of a soprano, you need to actually have, you need to spend some money. And again, going back to Bramford's tip, Bramford used to play a Selma Mark VI on loads of his recordings. He's now switched to a custom Yamaha. This is a Yanagasawa that I play. I think Yanagasawa make the best soprano saxophones and I've stuck with Yanagasawa now for, oh gosh, nearly 20 years I've had a Yanagasawa soprano, apart from a slight gap when I left college because it was the college's soprano and I needed to use a different soprano. So I was using like, I think I had a cheap Chinese one, which was rubbish. Then I had an L cart, which was kind of okay. And then I got a Yanagasawa and only when I got a Yanagasawa was I really getting a good sound out of my soprano. To use a clarinet reed rather than a soprano sax. And I've been doing that for a number of years now. It tends to give me a more centered tone. It's a bit harder to blow, but it does fit. Let me just put this reed on for you. Oops, and with soprano, don't compromise on intonation. It's just too, some mouthpieces you get, you have to learn to play them in. With sopranos, in my experience, I've tried big, wide, 10 star mouthpieces, which give me a big sound when I was trying to sort of emulate Courtney Pine and those kind of things. For years now, I've played, let me put this up here. Um, I had a Russo um, classical one. This is a vintage Selma soloist. It just, it's just comfortable, it's safe, gives me what I need. I've experimented a lot. I've got, um, if, I, if I haven't done a review, I should do one. If I have, I'll link it here. If there isn't a link there, there isn't a review um, of an absolute uh, soprano mouthpiece, which was fantastic. Really bright, really loud, great for playing on the curved soprano when I was playing with choirs. I'm playing a lot of avant-garde stuff, but kind of when I'm playing an ensemble, when I'm playing jazz, it's not the right setup.
get a good soprano, get a clarinet reed, get a mouthpiece that's middle of the road, some soloist. I use a Rovner ligature because I was using the Francois Louis and with the soprano I need to move in and out all the time that it's safer to have a ligature that allows the mouthpiece to move. Over on CambridgeSaxophone.com there are a number of lessons particularly focused for soprano players on matching the tone of people like Bramford Marsalis, Steve Lacey, sometimes Joshua Redman playing soprano but tends to be Bramford and Steve Lacey they're my two kind of guys when it comes to soprano and especially some of Bramford's classical stuff so um, kind of the romances for saxophone and the creation records that he did just playing along to some of the um, Sate, Jumopides, uh, the Rachmaninoff stuff, just nice slow melodies because they're quite hard to play well, quite easy to cock up. So playing along with those things, there's plenty of lessons on the website for that. And my final tip on soprano is you have to practice it like a separate instrument. So often I will practice soprano separately from playing tenor. I'll practice tenor, I'll take a break, I'll come back and play soprano. Sometimes I haven't practiced the soprano as much as I've practiced the tenor, but at other times, especially when I was in college, I spent a lot of time, again from a Bramford tip, working on classical music for clarinet. So I played the Copeland Clarinet Concerto on soprano sax, uh, the Villa Lobos Fantasia, which is a fantastic work for soprano, and also looked at some things like Cuckoo by Barry Croft, Co Croft I think it is, um, which is a very avant-garde piece with lots of different um, avant-garde fingerings in. Trying to expand how I practice the soprano rather than just kind of running up different things. And as such, I feel the soprano is... I have a different personality on the soprano than I do on tenor. It's not an extension of my tenor. For some saxophone players, the soprano, particularly Coltrane, the soprano just becomes an extra two octaves above his tenor, which is great, and I'm not dissing Coltrane for that, but I've always thought of the soprano as a different, a different sonic tool in my musical toolbox on a gig to be able to change the palette so that if I'm trying to convey a different sound, like the track you heard on, um, I hope I've put the track on this vlog, but if not, I'll, I'll fade out with it. A Lonely Woman that I played on Jazz Trio. If I'll put it in here. <laughs> There's some guys who play a lot of bebop on soprano. I'm not one of them, I don't do that that way as much. But anyway, I think that's enough information on the soprano. If you do want to play the soprano, please do go for it. But bear the things I've said in mind uh, today. Um, I don't like curry. So what do you want? I'll say pizza.
Hey, Mummy, what would you like? Burger. Mm. Mummy, what would you like? Burger. Burger. Three, one, two, three. Ha! That's me. Hang on a minute. Yeah, what else you have on? I'll have a golden one, whatever you've got. Oh, here you go. That was wonderful, wasn't it? Did you enjoy it? Good. That was an absolutely stunning place to have dinner tonight with the family. It's called the Green Man in Triplo, but spelled T H R I P L O W. It's a community owned pub, so when the pub was going to close down, the locals, so all the people in the village clubbed together and bought it out for themselves and then installed their own management and their own shares in. Fantastic idea, De definitely worth a vlog at a future date. But I hope those soprano tips are useful to you. I didn't actually mention before about how don't start as a beginner on a soprano, it's not a good idea. It's very difficult to get a good sound out of the soprano, so I'd always advise people to start an alto or tenor not soprano wherever you can help it there are also i'm off to germany this week to go to a conference in leipzig and uwe steinmetz who there's an interview of him either i'll put it here or i'll put it below because it's definitely on the cambridge saxophone website i did a gig with uwe in oxford where he was playing a c melody soprano which i'd never seen before or heard fascinating different sound but not what we're going to deal with today Thank you very much for watching the vlog today. If it's your first time, welcome. If you're already a seasoned watcher, well, thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you do subscribe by clicking my face below this and check out these videos as well. These videos as well below. See you soon.